Hello everyone, welcome to Super Lorcana World, your one-stop shop for everything Lorcana. And we are at this week's comment review section, where I take a look at the comments from last week's videos, and I pick some, and I read them, and I discuss them. If you want to be in one of these videos, leave a comment, and you might get in, and uh, yeah, like and subscribe, and that'd be great. We'll start here with Joel Martin, 8243. This is extremely interesting as a new TCG player. I had no idea about Wheel of Fortune or Professor Oak being banned. I would like to see more deep dives in single cards. Maybe prepared, I've heard, is number two on the most likely to be banned list. Or maybe Madame Mim Snake, since she was so powerful in set number two. I would be highly entertained by a Super Lacana World top, top five most bannable cards. Um, this is a very cool comment. He appreciates my work. And as a new TCG player, he might not be aware that broken cards have existed in games for a long time. So I'm glad that this comment exists. Um, there's actually no other card that I think deserves a hit right now. Um, I think everything else in this game is fine. Um, I'm going to say that and someone's in the comments going to be like, well, actually, this card could get banned because of this reason or something like that. But I, like, there's nothing else for me that deserves it. You know what I mean? And I'm not even convinced it needs to be banned, maybe limited or something. I don't, I don't know. But, uh. Yeah, very, very cool comment. It is true. A historical guideline shows us what has happened already, which is nice. Uh, the Moises 5646. This is a good discussion. RB needs to choose a path. They need to make a ban list or they might use start with overpower cards. Limiting to two per deck is fine. Um, I think they'll mostly just limit or ban like most deck games do. Very few games actually do incorporate a semi-limit list. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. I'm sure they'll pick their path soon, though. Not that competitive events are going to be starting shortly. The Justa 87 here. Splinter Twin gets banned in Modern because almost every deck played in Top 8 and is an, is, on a, on a, is an auto win. Right now, there's a good variety of Top 8 and NA in UK tournaments. Well, when I say good variety, I mean a better spread of cards and the whole new world is overrepresented. It doesn't nominate the Top 8, though it's overrepresented. Is that worth banning? Not really. The auto win isn't there. A whole new world is not an auto win card. No, by itself it's not an auto-win card, but with other cards it is. Um, that's kind of the point. That's something you might think, well, Jafar and Holy with only seven lore, that's not an auto-win. Uh, it's basically, when something just gets you a huge life advantage for no reason, that's, that's something. Now, may, maybe this guy is right and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this card will never touch a Forbidden Limit list. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's just speculation at this point because we don't know what they're going to do, right? For all we know, they're going to implement set rotation, which I hope not. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, I hope they don't. But, like, maybe they would do that. Uh, and then there'd be no reason to really have, like, a limited list. Unless they do what Magic does and have, like, an old format cards and then a new format card and that... You know, uh, this is too much for a comment video. This would be an interesting conversation for a different discussion video. But, um, you know, maybe it won't get banned. Or limited. Maybe it'll just stay at four forever. Or whatever. We'll we'll see what happens. Eh? Uh, Miserable Lemon. Great video. I recommend keeping a separate column for the shipping consideration. I'd buy these cards locally. Considering that the sum cards cost less than shipping. Well, you see, I don't have a problem including shipping. And I have no problem, like kind of rounding the prices one way or the other. Because at the end of the day, it's not going to be an exact science, right? I could say, you know, a place that this costs 20 bucks, but maybe you'll go to your local card shop and it might cost $18 or $22 for a place that. Like, you just don't know, right? You're never, it's not, it's not going to be perfect math anyway, so you might as well just make it all, just, just make it close enough or whatever. Um, it's okay. It, it's trial and run. It didn't get a lot of views of the video, so I don't know if I'll do another one. But, like, that's uh, it's, it's a good idea for next time, though. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, Eric Thomas, definitely solid video and thought process. There's always a way to get into a game, and I have a competitive budget version. Personally, I love the Queen because it allows for singing turn to whole new world, a solid removal. Yeah, that's true. If you turn to turn the Queen into the Queen, the, the Queen can uh, be exerted for a whole new world. I don't know if you want to do that turn two, but, like, that's definitely a thing you could do. I don't know. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's true. Um, Joel Martin. This guy has a lot of good comments, by the way. Awesome new content. Do you think Lorcana will continue being accessible to budget decks? When TCGs normally ramp up the investment barrier to enter? Some people would argue that the investment barrier is already pretty high for Lorcana, uh, which is part of the reason why I wanted to make the video that I made. 
because top tier decks right now have very expensive cards. Uh, you uh, there's no there are two good budget decks, and I'm using the term good loosely, uh, where you could build it, but you'd probably be at a disadvantage towards the rest of the meta, the Ruby decks. So I I I struggle to like say that. Uh, this looks like a card game where the barrier to entry is actually higher than most. Um, but that's a conversation for a different day, in my opinion. Uh, Matt's Magic Emporium. Kayla is going up like crazy too. I noticed that. We might talk about it on Wednesday's Market Watch. We'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Find out. Uh, Shardian. Would you rather invest in Inklands or Floodborne bo booster boxes for long-term hold? Long-term set two is still what someone else says, and I agree with that. But I there's a little bit of a wild card with Inklands. Inklands has way more enchanted cards than the other set. Uh, and my, me, my, my research has shown that it's not necessarily an increased chance to hit enchanted rares in set three, which means it's a little bit harder to pull enchanteds that you want in this set, which might long, long term artificially boost the value of the boxes because of the collector chase cards. Uh, we've seen that in Magic before and Yu Gi Oh! So it's very possible that that happens. But if you want safe and solid, uh, Rise of the Floodborne, especially if you can find them for cheap right now, like it's pretty pretty good stuff. Uh, the real Sheldon J. Plankton, did you buy a ticket for Atlanta or were you invited because you're a YouTuber? I did not buy a ticket for Atlanta because I didn't get in, and also didn't get into the waitlist, and none of that. Now, my this raises a question for me though: Did YouTubers get invited? If anyone knows if YouTubers got invited, let me know. Because I'd love to talk about it if that's the case. But I won't talk about it unless I have actual proof that it's happened. Samuel Bordeaux, 1545. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. You should you touched on a lot of aspects that people should keep in mind. I'd just like to add that a lot of people seem to forget about international markets. Well, I don't think people forget per se as it's just out of their mind, out of sight, out of mind. And people really aren't bothered too much by inter international markets because for the most part... It doesn't really affect them. Um, I find that in most cases, people can like buy from one market to the other uh, and maybe find some deals one way or the other. That's happened in like, Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh! But um, I don't know. That's a thought process, though. People don't forget about international markets for real. Uh, Guns and Roses, 6370. Instead of reprinting sets, I hope they just put chase cards like Dragon, Beast and to the, into their gift sets. Like how Ursula's raid is going to have Piglet. It will help sell extra gift sets and help new players who missed out staples. Also, the reprint is clearly different, having the ink splatter, so the OG cards will be more valuable. Um, I do think that they're going to reprint their cards in other sets. And I think it's incredibly likely that there's going to be a big reprint set at some point, like a, like a core set in Magic or a Mega Tin in Yu-Gi-Oh. I, I think reprints will happen. And uh, again, a conversation video for a different day. That's outside of the realm of today's topic. Lastly, sixth base. I'm pretty sure the Atlanta waitlist was filled up on that Sunday. There were 2.9k people following the event when it went live. Eventually, they will sell in leftover unclaimed tickets. Yeah, I could not find a way to get on the waitlist. So I'm assuming that it's just SOL. And that's fine. That's not really a, a big deal. But if Ravensburger wants to invite me, I'll come. Let me know. <laughs> I'll do for today's comment review video, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you later. Bye.